Oh, hey. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about this versus the, well, that's a bad example. What I'm talking about is gamers versus non-gamers. More specifically, why someone might not like a video game, even if it's possible, or even if it is possible for someone who knows next to nothing about games to become a gamer. First, let's look at how, how people felt about video games over the years. Video games have been around for a while now. Sure, not as long as TV, movies, or the music industry, but there's still no spring chicken. Back in the day, video games were objectively much more simple. It would seem childish for an adult to play them because they were so simplistic and were admittedly childish. Eventually, as games got more complicated and more mature, a newer argument arised. People eventually started to claim that things like video games cause kids to learn violent behavior. Now, as a kid, I remember constantly hearing this and being confused because in my mind, fighting in a video game, I mean, that wasn't really much more different than pretending to fight with my toys. I mean, really? I mean, sure, a kid might be a bit more rambunctious after playing a particularly exciting game, but I wouldn't say games were actually teaching violence. What? No. That, no. that doesn't even make sense. No. He didn't even see me. What? I'm going to find this kid. I'm going to go to his house. And I'm going to go to prison because of it. Nowadays, the view of gaming is much less harsh. Many people of many ages play games today. The business of making games is no longer a niche thing but has actually become very profitable. In fact, the gaming industry has made more money than the movie and music industry combined. Gaming has become such a big thing that people can make serious money by just having people watch them play games. I mean, look at Twitch. There are plenty of like millionaires on Twitch and YouTube. The stigma behind games being for kids or being harmful well, it's nearly completely gone away. We now have hundreds of genres, platforms, topics, and many levels of complexity to choose from. Now, as someone who has been gaming from an early age, many aspects of gaming come, you could say, naturally to me. Uh, for example, simply understanding how to move my character and the camera at the same time but if you were to put somebody who has no experience in a game like, let's say, Breath of the Wild, they would be completely lost and overwhelmed. And they probably wouldn't enjoy themselves. Now, does this mean non-gamers and gamers can't enjoy playing games together? No. I mean, thanks to mobile games like Candy Crush, Words with Friends, or even Farmville, many have an entry into gaming. Side note. While writing this, I realized I have no idea if Farmville even still exists. If you're a Farmville fanatic, uh, leave a comment and let me know. Uh, anyways, back to the topic at hand. Uh, because of these mobile games, many have an entry into gaming. Even my parents enjoy playing cards on their phones. So if you want to play something with someone who is a non-gamer, it may take a little effort to find the right game to play. But that game does exist. The best thing about gaming now is that it's still growing and expanding. Every year we see new interesting stories, gameplay and improvements from developers big and small, communities and friendships sprouting up seemingly out of nowhere. But it can be a lot for someone to take in. So if you're trying to introduce someone to gaming, take it slow. Start simple and have patience. Let the games speak for themselves, and at the end of the day, even if they don't become a gamer, they now do have a better understanding of you and your interests. Please, if you have any thoughts about this subject, feel free to leave a comment, educate me a little. And as always, please subscribe and thank you for watching.